You said Soulja Boy is the most influential? No, I said top three. Top three? Of like modern rappers. Next to who? Who's number one? Kanye? Who's Kanye number? West. Mm -hmm. Who's number two? <laughs> I'm just making it up to have content, <laughs> but Kanye is definitely number one, and it's not even close. But then Soulja Boy's got to be up there. He just has always had something to do oh, with I know what's who's popular. Number two. Who's number two? Chief Keef. Chief Keef, yeah. Chief Keef is the more so gangster Soldier Boy. We got Kanye West, Chicago. Chief Keef, Chicago. Soldier Boy, Soulja Chicago. Chicago. He's from Chicago. Come on, man. Yeah. He's from so you're saying? Come on. I ain't know that. Chicago. You know, I ain't gotta say it. Rap. You said it. You said it. Do you think? Do you think Chicago is the most influential rap city? Chicago is the most influential city, period. Influential city, period. Okay. And if I was a rapper, <laughs> I'd be number four. Okay. Cool. But yeah. Chicago. But yeah, you're, you're, you're yeah. Show me. Don't so at me. Soulja Boy invented Logan Paul, he said. Yeah, he invented he So if it wasn't for Soulja Boy, Logan Paul does a fight, Floyd Mayweather. He punched him. He like I think yeah. he, he punched him in that. Yeah, he's the first team. one to punch Logan Paul. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. What'd you think of that fight? Did you watch any of it? I didn't. I couldn't get it because my Showtime I was at. You didn't watch any highlights or anything. From what I've heard about it, it wasn't with all the hype. It I thought it was entertaining. I thought it was it was a good but time. I, I seen a clip of him punching him and knocking him out. Then he caught him, and then kind of like picked him back up. You see that? Yeah, I don't know how he like slumped. Yeah. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. I watched the whole fight. I thought it was very entertaining, except for then like they were hugging a lot, because then like he didn't know what to do, but but be on him because he was just too big. Yeah. At some point, I thought he was gonna just do some craziness and just like pick him up or like because <laughs> you, you know they kept referencing like when Floyd fought uh, Big Show. And like it was like early 2000s, oh, like the wrestler. Cool. That was all made up. Yeah, but it's like, that's like an exhibition fight. This was just an exhibition fight. Oh. So I was like, what if, what if that's his plan? Because their whole thing is garnering attention. Both him and his brother, like they make money off of attention. Yeah. And they do it super well. I thought it was a cool concept. Yeah. No, it was cool. They. They 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 the male Kardashians, man. Yeah, that's that's very accurate. <laughs> cool. All right, so what we at today? What number? Yeah, episode? What, what number episode? Twenty-eight, I think. Should be twenty-eight. I never know. You never get it right. We got it right like twice in a row. It is twenty-eight. All right, cool. All right, welcome to episode twenty-eight of the God Is Dope podcast. I'm Sharad. Jay. This is Jay. Tori. This is Tori. Um, yeah, we, 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 this is the third podcast in a week, mm -hmm. in less than a week. Um, got a few things to talk about. Uh, I know we had, we just dropped the episode of Making the Brand, yeah. and we had a, a pretty good feedback off of that, pretty good response. A lot of people are saying Jay, is in, Jay was in rare form right there. I told them, do whatever the hell you need to to the site, like the landing page. The, I said, just let me know. Because the issue I have also is when they fuck with the shipping price, me and Tori don't know. And then it's like, you're like, what's fuck with the shipping? And I'm like, I don't know. Because then I look like an idiot if you're asking me why shipping $8 today. And I have no idea who did that or why. Don't touch anything unless you let me know. Who was going in? You know what I'm saying? And rightfully so. Uh, we had a comment on there that you showed me earlier. Oh yeah. Somebody said something that was pretty interesting. I just want to respond to that. Do you want to read it out loud? Or do you want to read it? You can read it. The thing is, Shrod sits in the shadows way too much. If he actually got out in front of his own brand like Nip, I think he wouldn't need half the marketing that he thinks he needs. I went on his IG that was shown on this video. He's too busy trying to be an entertainer. 13 posts with 37,000 followers won't cut it. He has too many yes men around him. They should run the brand through him like the marathon did with Nip. He, us, the marketing. He is the marketing, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna get you. How you feel about that, Tori? Who the yes men? 
Who the yes man? Yeah. Yeah, when I, when I saw the video, I, I, I thought it was a little funny because the whole video was us like not agreeing on different things. So I was like, the, the, the yes man theory is kind of silly. I don't. Uh, I think we're the opposite of that, if anything. Yeah, I would like to know who the yes man is too. I don't know where in that video gave that impression that we had yes men around us. I mean, I appreciate the comments. Like, I appreciate all comments. Yes, for sure. Um, do you feel like I sit in the shadows too much? No, I mean, I don't think it's really relevant. Not for our brand. Not for our brand, yeah, and also like, Nipsey Hussle was Nipsey Hussle before the clothing brand. So it's like, it's, it's only natural that he would, for his brand, be the face of the entire brand. Right. Not that you don't have your own thing going, but yeah. it's like... Yeah, like I, the, for, the, the, the for brand... brand like, for a brand like God is Dope, man, like, people gotta understand, like, I realized a long time ago that this ain't about me. You know what I'm saying? Like, this, I'm not saying, like, Marathon clothing wasn't bigger than Nipsey, or Nipsey was bigger than Marathon, but like no, this is way. I'll, I'll definitely say that. Yeah. I mean, all respect to them and everyone over there, but God is dope will continue to be God is dope with Sherrod, without Sherrod, with Jay, without Jay, with Tori, without Tori. Like, yeah. I think the Marathon brand clothing, like, that was what it was because of who 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 it Nipsey was, was. Yeah. yeah, and then his brother too, and like right. it was like they were the face of that. Right. So if they like. I mean, if they were to have just like dropped the brand, like stop promoting it altogether, I don't think that brand could have continued. Like, right, exactly. That's a good point. You know, and you know, I think I think so many people get caught up in like pride and ego. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to, you know, this is my brand, so people need to know me. They need to see me, and I think that's something that I um, I, I learned that. You know what I'm saying? In the in the early days. You know, even before I even started, you know, promoting it like that, I'm like, yeah, people probably don't care about me. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to um, a brand like this. Now, personal or, you know what I'm saying, my other brands, Loved and Lost, maybe, you know what I'm saying? But I don't think people really care and I can't get caught up, you know, reading my own press, trying to come out like, y'all know that's me, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, people that know, they know. Like, because the, the reason I'm stepping out now, is more so, you know, for black people, you know what I'm saying, to see somebody like me, you know what I'm saying, like, like it's coming from, motivational. yeah, yeah, That's coming from where I came from. Uh, I'll say from the jump, of like, I mean, getting more consistent with it now, but it's been a, I feel like a good separation, like the brand is the brand, and then the YouTube and the podcast are like showing the behind the scenes of you and the entrepreneurship and the business side of it, but it's like, People who buy God is Dope is like, they buying because of God is Dope. The people yeah. who watch entrepreneur stuff is like, they may own God is Dope, but they watch it for a different reason. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, I appreciate people's perspective. And yeah, so yeah, I don't, and then like our customer base, man, like, like if they realize I'm not a pastor or, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're gonna, like, they gonna freak out like, what? What's this, you know? So, yeah, man, I, I think the way it is, is great. Like, it's, it's a nice, it's a nice vibe the way it is. Yeah, I think like, you can use the brand more than the brand can use you. And I mean that in the sense that like, if you, so choose to like use the brand to amplify who you are and like motivate the way you have been recently. And like, I mean, over the years you have, but now we're more consistent. That benefits you. But whether or not you do that can help the brand a little bit, but it's not like the, like where at least their point was, we won't need half the marketing we need. Like, I don't think that's true at all. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's subjective, you know what I'm saying? From that perspective of like, all right, Everybody's really big on black businesses today. You know what I'm saying? So like, if we if we took that approach, like, black business owner buys, you know, um, 2.5 acres in the heart of Atlanta, and uh, you know, and then like stuff like that will live on. Like, you know, people gonna talk about it. They'll write their own, you know, article about how all of that stuff works, right? But I don't think it's something that. If we want to make a post about it, we can, but it's not something that we should like shove down people's yeah. throats. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know this black on, right? You know it's uh, you know a, 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 
young guy running this, you know, this is, this is, hey, I'm the owner of the guy, this is dope, you know, I don't, that work for, for brands, you know what I'm saying, and, and it fits their brand, but it don't fit the God is Dope brand, especially how I built it, you know, over the past five, six years. Yeah, so like, yeah, I don't think, it, I just don't think it works. So like, Nike's gonna be Nike, whether or not Phil Knight makes books and drops stuff about right. himself. Right. But it, it's cool, and if you're into that, it's yeah. there. Right, but right. The average person buying Nike isn't buying Nike because of Phil Knight. Right. We had an um, interesting, Saturday afternoon conversation. Uh, we're thinking about different uh, ways to uh, have content in the factory, you know what I'm saying? So it's just not repetitive and stuff like that. And I brought up the idea of having a factory dog. And, you know, everybody knows the most common or, or the number one post on IG are dogs and babies. You know, people really love them, so it's like, every time we post a dog, it'll probably go crazy. You know, um, I don't think you, you're looking to have a baby any, anytime soon. No. So yeah, the baby's out the question, Tori, you? You already know that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we said, okay, cool. Let's do the dog thing, right? So I'm like, all right, I don't want to take care of a dog 24 seven. So let's split the time. You know what I'm saying? I keep the dog two days. <laughs> Tori, you know, I know where he stays. It's a nice, you know what I'm saying? A nice, beautiful area. You keep the dog two, three days. Jay, I'm pretty sure you, you know, you stay in a nice, nice area, you know, comfortable living conditions. Jay, keep the dog two, three days. And, you know, we, 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 we share the responsibility of having a dog. Jay, on the other hand, thinks that's neglect. Go ahead, tell the people why. You know. I, I don't think that's a good idea. I think, uh, I think the dog needs a stable environment. It's gonna get attached to someone. I think it's a little messed up for to just be playing hot potato with the little French but how, bulldog. But how, but how do you know? I don't, how do you know? I can't speak for the dog. You like can't you speak said, for the dog. Sherrod's point is I can't speak for the dog, but as someone who grew up with some dogs, and my parents have dogs, like, it gets attached. Like, you can tell when a dog's sad or upset. And it, when it build, builds a bond with someone, and then that person just like leaves, you can tell. And then you can also tell when they're excited when that person comes back. But the, what I thought was the most messed up about this deal <laughs> was that after this game of hot potato or someone keeping it for the most part and Shroud not really wanting to take care of the dog. I'll keep it 30%. 30, but see. <laughs> He said that after a couple years, when Rado's old enough to take care of the dog, he wanted to take the dog back. Which the dog might full like time. the best. So it's not a situation where it's like, dang, the dog got to go back to Sherrod. He might be like, nah, I rock with Sherrod the most out of all three. Y'all. Also, I mean, we're talking about the dog's feelings. Also, people get attached to dogs. Whoever, what, what if, what if one of us is like, dang. The dog, like, <laughs> I don't want to give up the dog. Like, I just think it's like the dog, if it's gonna be a factory dog, it should be someone's dog. And that's just their dog that happens to be at the factory. Not, not the dog that's here for the sole purpose Let's of- Let's ask the people. How do y'all feel? You know what I'm saying? We're gonna ask the people to comment. Leave a comment, let us know. If we get a factory dog, should it have one sole owner and just come to the factory? Or do you think, the dog might like, you know what I'm saying, spending the weekends with Tori and then coming back with me and then... Is Tori or do you want to take it? Somebody... <laughs> I'm saying if Tori did want to take it. Uh, in, in, in a world where everybody was willing to take the dog. Like, we, like the dog, like, just imagine, right? You, as an eight-year-old, seven-year-old, and you got three lit environments to go to every day. You're gonna go to school from that environment, but it's just like, it's, it's, it's have not- you ever, Have you ever had a dog? I had a dog when I was like four. Okay, but do you remember the bond you had with that dog? Did you hang out, like, did you like the dog? It was a rock, it, it was, nah, I, I ain't really- See, I don't think you had a good dog experience. I did. If you, that's where I think you should just have this dog. And then you'll, you'll grow from it. You'll, you'll feel I'll, I'll appreciate attached life more. to the dog. Huh? I'll appreciate life more. I think so. I think dogs are pretty cool. I don't have a kid, so I'm sure that's cooler. But like, <laughs> I'd would say it's a it's a it's a close second. Like that's what I hear. Like 
I don't have a child to compare it to. But I also haven't had my own dog. Like, it's my dog that just stays with me. It's like my family's dog, you know? Yeah. Dogs, multiple. But I, I think it's messed up. I'm pretty sure the, so the people going, you know, they're going to side with you, but I, I, I would like to hear how they feel about it. Sure. Um, but you, we all, we, this whole thing is about content, and I do agree that having a dog in content would turn it up for sure. I mean, photo shoots are just even, like, casual, like, and, and the dog, we didn't explain what kind of dog. We said it would be a Frenchie. Oh, yeah. A small little Frenchie bulldog. Yeah. Be cute. A gray one. A gray one specifically? Yeah. They, all, gray one they all get about the same size, right? I think so. Yeah. From what I've seen. Okay. Wow. Yeah. We'll see what's up. Um, do we have anything else to talk about? Nothing specific. Tennis collection drops tomorrow. We're going to preview that tonight. Mm. Today's Monday, so... Dropping Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, what do we have Wednesday? Did we have we had somebody asked a question in there, right? They said something about the um, the marketing whitelist marketing on. Oh uh, yeah, it was more of a suggestion. Yeah, let me pull that up real quick. So, someone said, me, Andrew said. Your ROAS on organic influencer posts are going to be underwhelming. Organic reach is in the toilet. Negotiate running the content with your ads manager with their pages. So it's like what they're talking about is like whitelisting ads where you, you're you the influencer, Sherrod well, posts. I mean, just as organic is in the toilet, so is paid. Yeah. That's like every, like I think everything is in the toilet. I, I, what I think is we just create, we just get the best influencers. You know what I'm saying? Like the influencers with real influence and the best offers and the best product. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To offset, like, like make it, some stuff we're going to make it feel like an ad, some stuff we're going to make it feel organic, you know? Yeah, the, the two ways we could do is taking the content and doing it on our own platform, and then the way they're suggesting is, if you're the influencer, we connect our ads manager to your post using the post ID, and then you just approve it, and then it runs as Sherrod's ad, but I'm controlling all the targeting, and the details behind the ad. So you don't actually see anything happening on your end. The crazy part about it, the way the way the results we've been getting on Facebook and Instagram, I think it would be better organic from the, the, the specific influences that we're reaching out to. Yeah. What do you think? Like, I think it would be better on the actual post than promoting well, it. Well, I mean, we know that even with the influence that you may have or, like, the followers you may have, not everyone is gonna see your post. So like, the, I guess the like, the plus in like using the paid method would be, you can guarantee that you use that person's whole audience. And it's like someone that they already are interested in to a certain extent. And then, I mean, if you got really deep with it, you could take like their audiences and create lookalikes that are specific to them. Um, but I'm more interested in using like the, the content and repackaging it for us to put out, whether that be through other channels or paid itself, or on our own, or blog style, so you Twitter. Should you want ads from their from their profile or not? I think we could try it if it like once we build these relationships. It's also like Brian was explaining. It's also it's hard to explain. Like it's also a great way to get them to like hire you for marketing too. Or it's like, dang, you did that. Like yeah. that'd be like yeah. I mean. Post-wise, like engagement-wise, they'll see the, all the likes and comments coming from like, like it all goes to the same part. So like they could be happy about it. But what Brian was saying was like, not a lot of them could really grasp the idea of like, like to them it sounds like someone's in on their page and they don't want to give up these things and we're yeah, strangers. I mean, like you can like literally see their DMs and all that type of stuff too, right? Well, not through this process. Oh. If they add me to the ads manager, yeah. Because oh. I'm just in there, I'm, like I'm in their account. But the way this works, it's like, have you ever seen those posts where it says like paid promotion with Puma Sports or something? Like, it's something like that. Yeah, this thing, like, before last week we were talking about it, I never really paid attention to Were it. But like, it yeah, now that we talked about it, I see it yeah. all the time. Like, I saw um, Jason Tatum mm -hmm. ad with like um, Spotify, mm -hmm. and it was like Jason Tatum, like based off his profile, but yeah. Spotify ad. And so up until recently, the only way to get that paid promotion with whatever was doing this whitelisting process, now they added like a funny feature where like 
I can just go in there and like make an organic post as the influencer and say this is a paid promotion with God is Dope, and then uh, you'll get a notification and you'll like approve it, and then yeah. it'll show up. I mean, they've been doing that a while. I mean, the whitelisting thing is like way older than this way, like with the approval thing. Yeah. But it's like you, you can't really tell which was which, but it works all the same on how it looks. But it's definitely uh, an interesting angle. Like we haven't done it, so right now we're at the point of testing everything and anything to see results. Yeah. All right. And the episode 28. Ask us some questions. Yeah, ask some questions, man. Whatever y'all need to know, we finna We doing one every day, so we need stuff to talk about. What do y'all want to see? <laughs> yeah. um, we'll make some content around that and then keep going. All right, cool. So 28, we out.